Do you ever find yourself arriving a bit too high on the approach? Do you frequently end up flaring 200 feet above the threshold? Do you end up doing dirty dives to get down to your home airfield? Then perhaps you need to give some thought to planning your descent profile. If you normally fly at high altitudes and can divide or multiply big numbers by three, then you're already equipped to calculate where to start the descent. You will normally plan to fly a three degree descent path. In order to calculate the top of descent, simply divide your altitude by 300. Or even easier, divide your flight level, that's your altitude divided by 100, by three. In this example, we are in the cruise at flight level 350 so we will commence the descent just after 117 nautical miles from the destination. If we expect to join downwind to join the radar pattern, we would delay the descent by about 20 nautical miles. Monitor the descent by checking the altitude against the DME. In this example, we are flying straight into runway 27. 40 nautical miles out, we should be at 12,000 feet. Here's another example. This time we are at 60,000 feet. We should plan to start our descent with 200 track miles to run. With 50 track miles to run, we should be at 15,000 feet. On windy days, we should adjust the top of descent accordingly. If you're really good at sums, simply adjust the calculated distance by 10% for each 40 knots of head or tailwind component. Don't slavishly fly a 3 degree descent path at the expense of safe terrain clearance. Pilots who usually fly slower, unpressurised aircraft at lower levels can simply calculate their descent based on a comfortable 500 feet per minute rate of descent. Pilots who fly metric aircraft had better keep their conversion tables handy. Next time we'll look at calculating our descent in order to arrive at a reporting point at the correct altitude. Bet you can't wait. Don't think. Don't think. Don't think. Don't Don't think. Don't think. Don't think. Don't think. Don't think. Don't think.